Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I am so grateful you're circling up with me today and my special guest. We're going to be talking about how love exists across all realms. And yes, I'm referring to that we are always, always connected to our loved ones on the other side. I'm your host, Linda Joy, um, Mindset Mojo mentor, intentional living guide, publisher of Aspire magazine. And you all know me, I love bringing you conversations that get you to dive deeper into your own heart, um, kind of stretch yourself a little bit into maybe some of the beliefs you have, and as always, to give you hope and inspiration for your journey. Um, my guest today, Kim Coots, has been a successful Inc. 500 award-winning business leader for 25 years, as well as a spiritual teacher. And as we're going to be discussing today, the trajectory of her life changed when the unexpected deaths of her only child and her mother set her on a journey to find proof of the afterlife and after-death communications. Kim is a certified grief coach, evidential medium, ordained minister, and spiritual teacher, as well as I shared an Inc. 500 award-winning business leader. Now, although she's enjoyed a successful 30-year business career, those unexpected deaths changed the trajectory of her path of service. Embracing her gifts as a spiritual teacher and evidential medium, Kim teaches women who've experienced the death of a loved one how to utilize spiritual tools and techniques for transforming grief and connecting with loved ones in spirit so they can find hope, healing, and purpose in living after loss. She is also trained in the healing ways of the shaman for over 10 years. She's a Reiki master teacher and ordained spiritual peace minister. She officiates weddings, funerals, and house blessings. And I am so excited for this conversation, Kim. Welcome. Thank you so much, Linda. I am so grateful to be here and so excited to connect with you and your audience today. Well, as we talked about on the year, um, I know there was a time in my life I was skeptical until I had my own experiences. And once you know and experience it, there is such a peace from that. And I know that's what we're going to be talking about today, because there's a time when you have a loss in your life that you don't know if you'll ever come to a place of peace again. Isn't that true, Kim? Absolutely. Yes. So take us back um, to the place that began for you. Um, we don't have to go into detail if you're not comfortable about the passings, but I'm looking for that shift of you owning your gifts and starting on this journey. Yeah, so to, to give you a little bit of context to it, you know, as you mentioned, I've I've been in the business world for a long time, and it's, it's a very different world than, than the spiritual healing world that I've also been a part of. So I kind of feel like I've been living in two different worlds and kept the spiritual world a bit hidden or select few that knew it or, you know, clients that I worked with uh, privately. But, you know, I had this concern about, you know, what are my business clients and, and my business colleagues uh, who respect me very much going to think if they, they knew about this side of me. So I kind of kept that hidden, uh, but had a, a great joy for it. And, you know, I've always communicated with the spirit world in, in the form of angels and spirit guides and, uh, you know, creator, um, whatever that means for other people. But for me, um, I've, I've always done that. It's, it's been something that I felt very connected to. But I had always had this kind of, I don't know if you'd call it skepticism or maybe just a little bit of fear or not really understanding connecting with loved ones on the other side. And whenever I would get emails from, you know, some of my favorite publishers uh, on books from authors who are mediums or 
programs. I would just kind of feel a little bit uneasy about it. I couldn't really explain why, um, but I think probably because the only experiences that I had with mediums were through Hollywood horror movies or the shows you see on TV where there's kind of a scary feeling to it or something, you know, scary around it. So I just didn't understand it. And then in July of 2020, I unexpectedly lost my daughter. My daughter died and, you know, I can't even put into words that experience, but it, it shifted something in me where I was willing to look at things from a new perspective and nothing was more important to me than learning how I could have a connection with her on the other side. I, I knew that I could, and I remember that, that day that she died, laying on the floor of my bedroom closet, saying to myself, if I didn't know what I know, I wouldn't be able to make it through this. And I, I don't know what part of me was speaking from that, you know, sharing that, but that, that made me think, you know, what was that or what is speaking through me to say that? What do I know? And that's the, what I attribute to uh, my shamanic healing practice of, of knowing that we have a soul and there is more to life than this. And unfortunately, three weeks to the day that my daughter died, my mom died unexpectedly. And this journey has just, it's been so painful and difficult, but it also inspired me to start searching for this proof. You know, I, I, I received so many signs from my daughter right away, but I was doubting those and I wanted more proof and I, I want, I didn't want to doubt, you know, I wanted to know with certainty. So there's this spiritual side of me. And then there's also this analytical side of me and I needed, I just needed that proof. So that's, that's really the, the start of this journey for me. Well, first off, I am so sorry for your loss. I can't even imagine. Um, so I just want to send that love to you. Mm -hmm. And also to recognize the courage it took in the midst of deep grief to not only move forward, but move forward with this mission to, um, to look, to look at for these connections, to, to dive deeper into that, because I know that had been difficult, but at the same time gave you peace. Yeah, the, the, the more that I opened up to experience this, what I call love between worlds, the more hope and courage that I have on this journey. And so it's added and really enhanced your own healing journey is receiving the signs and having this connection with them on the other side. Yeah, it doesn't take all the pain away. Uh, you know, I, I am still grieving. I probably will be the rest of my life, but the nature of my grief has changed. And this knowingness that my daughter and my mother are still with me, I still have a connection with them. My relationship with them looks very different, but I still have a relationship with them. And it's it's opened, the, it's allowed me to, to see that there is an, an, another doorway in my life and that it's opened and there is a light beyond that door. And, you know, I have the hope and the courage to keep going. And there's days that are incredibly difficult still, uh, but they're, that hope and that courage and that love that I have with them and with knowing that this is so powerful for other people too, really inspires me. Yeah, and I have come to believe just from my own experience that those we've lost that are on the other side, they want us to thrive and find joy and love again. So they want that for us. Um, and they're there cheering us on and guiding us. It's just um, what I've discovered on my own journey. And one of the things for you was, did this like kind of push you um, out of the spiritual closet um, or had you already come out? I know you were a spiritual teacher and all that, but I'm talking about as a evidential medium. Did you come out after their passing or had you already come out with those gifts, even though you were hiding them from the other world? I did not come out with being a medium or even embracing that for myself until after their deaths. And that was 
that was a journey for me as well on getting to that point to, to be able to do that. And from the spiritual teacher side of things, you know, I had my own spiritual healing practice that I've had for many years and kept that under the radar and very separate from my business career. But I, after this, this happened um, with my daughter and my mother, my two worlds collided and I decided I didn't want to live two different lives anymore. And I, I understood how other people might feel about, and, and the, the clients that I work with now, sharing how other people don't understand their, their need and desire to connect with their loved ones on the other side and often get criticized for it or um, judged for it. And they feel like they have to hide that and keep it to themselves. And in my heart, I knew that part of my purpose here is to help normalize mediumship. Oh, most definitely. There is such peace um, when a medium can help connect two loved ones together, right? One on the other side uh, and the one still in their human body. I have gone to many mediums, a lot of my dear friends mediums and have been featured on Ricky Lake and the peace that the person receives is such a gift. And I, my heart um, believes that if you have that gift, as you do, um, I don't want to say responsibility, it's such a sacred offering to others to be able to bring them together. And I can tell that that's how you feel in your heart, too. I'm so glad you mentioned the word sacred, because as I started shifting my perspective around it and embracing it, not only for myself, but in, in doing readings for other people, I realize there's a lot of different types of mediums out there and, and the way that they share their gift. And to me, it is a, a sacred act of healing. And, and that's what I help people to, to understand and experience is the sacredness of it and what a healing art that it truly is. It is. And I believe it has a lot to do with intention and um, from everything I've read and just the, the energy I'm picking up today from you is you go in with sacred intention to give a gift of healing because as you shared at the beginning, there are negative connotations of mediums that we saw on TV where they're going to deliver bad news. And I'm like, no, the ones in the highest vibration of love, that's not what they do. Yeah. They serve to connect and to give hope and possibility. Kim, we're going to take our first break and we come back. I want to um, talk to you about how you discovered uh, and how we can discover too, how we can connect with the other side. So we'll be back in a moment, my friends. I am with Kim Coots, certified grief coach and evidential medium. You can learn more at kimcoots.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Hey America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kinda like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. 
I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is Kim Coots, a certified grief coach, evidential medium, and someone that for a long time had to walk both worlds, you know, as an Inc. 500 award-winning business leader to the sacred uh, work she's doing now to connect um, individuals with their loved ones on the other side. We're talking about all that and more today. So thank you for being here. So how did you discover that you could connect with the other side? Was there a, a, just a pivotal moment that still stands out or was it a bunch of little things? Yeah, my, my first experience with it was in 2004 when I had a dream that my grandfather, who had, he died when I was six years old, came to me in this very, very, very vivid dream and told me that my grandmother would be passing soon. And my grandmother was like a, a mom to me. And uh, he, he told me that not to worry, she would be great. He would be there to meet her and everything would be fine. And I woke up crying and it wasn't, it was a very loving dream. It wasn't like a nightmare or scary in any sense. And it was so real. And I told my grandmother about it. And two months later, my grandmother did die and it was unexpected. And at that time, I thought maybe it was just a coincidence, uh, but it was just such a vivid dream. So that was my first experience from, you know, I've, I've had communication with the spirit world for a very long time, but that, that was the first personal experience I've had with, in regards to um, a loved one who died. And then two months before my daughter died, that same grandmother came to me. This time I was awake and I felt her presence. I saw her and she, she gave me the message that, that death would be coming to my family and everything would be okay. She would be there. I didn't know who it was that she was referring to. I, I didn't get a sense of, of the person, but it was just a very clear and loving message that, that it was coming and um, that she would be there and, and that everything would be okay. It was like a reassurance. And at that time, you know, it was the beginning of COVID and I thought maybe I'm just really worried. I had some family members with health conditions and I said, maybe it's just my fear. Uh, and then, you know, two months from that time, I, my daughter died. And knowing those two, you know, I had those two very personal visits from my grandparents letting me know that this was coming. And I, I think that was their way of letting me know that for many different things, one, that the other side does exist, that they are there, and, and also that our, our deaths are, are planned. It's Even if it, it seems like it's an unexpected thing, uh, there was just so much reassurance and, and love in their visits. So those were the first two personal experiences I had with mediumship myself. Wow, so powerful. And, and you know, I have a, just a question for you. So when you received it, I look at it as a gift of love. It's like, this is going to happen, but don't worry. I'm here to greet them. So that's one beautiful message. When you receive it, did you... Did, especially the second experience in during 2020 did you ever go into fear like oh my god who is it oh my god i can't deal with this like like that kind of energy of like almost precognition of knowing i i actually did i i mentioned to my husband um yeah i told him about the experience and i said you know if if it's kira which is my daughter i won't make it through this and i i wouldn't say I had fear around it, but I would also say it made me be more proactive too and um, do, you know, pray, um, set intentions, um, put light around my family, just really uh, being mindful about the love around my family and also um, connecting with them. And it, it was difficult because it was COVID, so everyone was kind of distancing and so forth. And, and my mom and my daughter both had health conditions, so I was. I was really uh, careful about not being around them too much, or if I was uh, being really careful, but connecting in a different way and really being grateful for my family. 
Whew. That is, um, I just can't even imagine um, living through that. Now, for those who aren't familiar with the term, Kim, I should have started with this earlier. What does evidential mediumship mean? Yeah, so there, there's different types of mediumship that you might hear, like physical mediumship, mental mediumship, psychic mediumship, evidential mediumship. Um, you know, a medium is a person who can communicate and receive communications from uh, the spirit world, and that, that can be loved ones on the other side, angels, spirit guides, and so forth. Um, but an evidential medium, and I had never really heard of this until I set out on my journey um, to learn everything about the afterlife and after-death communication, I stumbled upon evidential mediumship. And in researching that, it was exactly what I was looking for because when you get a reading from a medium, if they're sharing some general messages, like I have your mother here and she's sharing, you know, that she loves you and she's here with you, it's, it's somewhat subjective. Like you don't know if it's really a message or not, you know, it could be a message for anybody, but evidential mediumship adds another layer to it where the medium is getting what we call evidence from the loved one in spirit to share with their living loved one that there's no way the medium could have known. So it might be um, their characteristics, their personality, how they looked, what career they had, how they died, memories that the loved one shares with them. Um, so very specific information that the, the medium could have no way of knowing that they share with a living loved one to validate. And that was that was the proof that I was looking for for myself and was so grateful to learn about evidential mediumship. And, and that, that, that's been my experience is like when they say, oh, and this person has a tattoo shaped like a, a unicorn with a fish over its head. And I'm like, how would they know that? Right. That was, um, that has always blown me away. So that also for those who walk the line between believing and not believing, I feel that evidential medium gives even, it touches that aspect of that part of the mind that says this can't be real. But when you give information like that, how can it not be real? Right. Yep. And you must hear that over and over again, right? Like, I can't believe you know that. Yes. And that, that I think is part, you know, the, the messages that the, the loved ones on the other side share are healing, but that evidence is so healing too, because it, it erases that doubt. Yes. That's what I, that's what I was feeling as you were speaking. So do you believe that, well, there's a couple things. Do you believe we're all psychic, but at the same time, I have a question. Does psychic mean they can connect with the other side or is a psychic and a medium different? That's a great question. A psychic and a medium are different. A, a psychic um, gets impressions that they share where a medium receives information. So they're, they're receiving where uh, psychics are perceiving. Ooh, and, that's a great, that's an easy to understand description. So yeah. go ahead. And they're, you're, not to confuse everyone, but there's what's called a psychic medium, and they you know, they do both. They they can perceive things, but they also receive things. So, for example, in a reading that I do, I'll often get you know the, the evidence coming through, the messages coming through, but like you mentioned earlier on our call, that our loved ones are supporting us from the other side. I'll often get um, information from them you know, to share with the living loved one of how the, lo the loved one in spirit knows what's going on or there's something going on in their life and they might give some guidance or some clarity around things. Um, so that's, that, that is somewhat of a, an aspect of a reading as well that can come through on sharing those types of messages and information from more of a psychic perspective. Well, thanks for clarifying that because I've always wondered because I know some people use the phrase um, phrases, um, you know, merge them together. But I love your description. I wrote that down, receiving and perceiving, because that really clearly identifies where the information is coming from. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was wonderful. We're going to take our next break. When we come back, we're going. I'd love to talk about some of the signs from the other side. 
because there may be many in our of our listeners who may be saying, I wonder if that was a sign from my mother. And they go into that doubt. So let's talk about that when we come back from our next break, my friend. Okay. We'll be right back. I'm with Kim Coots, certified grief coach, evidential medium, and um, just extraordinary spiritual teacher guiding individuals to transform the grief and connect with their loved ones in spirit so they can find hope, healing, and purpose in living after loss. You can learn more at kimcoots.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you ready to create and live the divinely guided life intended for you? A life not bound by your past or tied to a specific future. A life beyond your fears and what ifs that is filled with limitless possibilities. Experiencing an empowered life of fulfillment, joy, and connection is possible when you embrace a spiritual solutions centered lifestyle. Through her transformational teachings and programs, Lisa Hermada, empowered Life View Guide, Life Transformation Mentor, and founder of Love is the Seed, empowers women to break the barriers holding them back from living their sacred truth so they can find greater connection with their inner wisdom and their divine source to co-create a life that brings peace, joy, and self-acceptance. Visit loveistheseed.com for positive guidance and valuable resources to support you in embracing an empowered life view. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I am so glad that you're here with myself and my guest, Kim Coots, today. So, Kim, what are some of the common signs from the other side? Because I know some of our listeners are like wondering if what they've experienced is that, or as you said at the beginning, you used to believe, is this real? Or are you kind of imagining that it's a sign? I am so glad you asked this question because I, I often will, as I'm doing readings, people say, I haven't received a sign for my loved one. And then later on in our conversation, they'll say, oh, this happened. I'm like, oh, that's a sign. So oftentimes we don't realize what signs are or um, how the how our loved ones in spirit communicate. And I have a, I can share some of them. I have a, a list of them or a guide on my website um, for more of those signs. But some of the common ones, and I'm going to start with one that might might seem like it's very simple, but your intuitive senses. Our loved ones uh, communicate through intuition. They don't speak to us uh, like we do, you know, as humans with voice boxes, um, where we're we're clearly hearing a voice. We might hear their voice, uh, not physically, but kind of in our in our mind, um, as clear audience. But our intuitive senses are a great way that our, our loved ones communicate with us. So you might, for example, feel them. Like I just I feel the presence of of this loved one, or I I smell 
what they what they smell like. Maybe it's a cologne that they wore or something that they used to cook or something that reminds you of them from a smell. Sometimes you might imagine them or hear their voice. So our intuitive senses are a great way for that. And you often will just have this knowingness or this feeling of their presence through one of your intuitive senses. So that's uh, a way that signs come through. Winged ones like birds, butterflies, uh, those are that are behaving a little differently. So they're they're often not doing something common. So they might do something like I had a sign for my daughter uh, the day of her funeral. I officiated her funeral, and right afterward, I had this hummingbird, which and I lived in Michigan at the time, and I hadn't seen a hummingbird in a long time. It flew right up to my face, and it hovered there for what seemed like minutes, and I just had this overwhelming sense of her presence. Um, so winged ones are definitely ways that our loved ones will communicate with us. And I think, you know, that comes because on wings, they can get to us easier. Uh, rainbows are another sign um, in, in how they show up or where they show up, you know, timing wise. Uh, dreams are a really, a really powerful sign. And dreams that feel emotionally loving, even though they might make you cry or, or be emotional because it's, it, you felt it so deeply, but those types of dreams are signs. The dreams that are more like nightmares or fears are not are not visits from our loved ones. Those are our subconscious processing our grief. But the dreams where we we feel our loved ones coming through and we have that that brief encounter with them is a really powerful and awesome sign. And there there's many others, uh, but those are a few of, of the common signs. Well, that is powerful. I want to invite everyone to please um, grab that e-guide that she has on her website at kimcoots.com so that you can learn some more of the common signs um, of your loved ones connecting with the other side. Um, one of the experiences I had, there's been many over the years, but one that put myself and Dana is, um, it, it kind of touches on some of those, but we were driving back from a cross-country trip. We had our 15-year-old daughter with us. This is She's 38 now, so it tells you a long time ago, right? And, and the funny part is, you know, a, a double-capped pickup truck, right? So nobody was in the back seat. They were sleeping in the back cab, and I had taken over driving Kim. And it was like two in the morning, and I should have known better because I do do well with night driving. I get hypnotized by the lines. But we were trying to make it home. And a side part of this story is Dana has a dear, had a dear friend for 20-something years who had been fighting cancer for like 15 of those years. He was one of the longest living tax law patients, but he was doing amazing. He was in the process of building a house. That's how good he was doing. We were driving. I see now I fell asleep at the wheel. Thankfully, it was three o'clock in the morning on an interstate highway, but I started across the, the three lane highway into the other lane. I, I can still feel this right now. A hand, a powerful hand grabbed my shoulder and said, Linda, with this booming voice, I woke up, grabbed the wheel, threw my family who was in the back cab sleeping in the back of the truck and righted the truck. In the moment I pulled over, I grabbed my shoulder and I'm looking down because I could still feel the handprint. Now, Dana and Nikki couldn't reach me because they were locked behind that. And of course, I got yelled at as we got back in the car, right? And as we're driving, I told Dana, I go, something just, the strangest freaking thing just happened. And I go, I feel like I feel the thumbprint still on me. Kim, I knew what I felt. There was no doubt in my mind, but I couldn't explain it. Yeah. We arrived home five hours later as we're unpacking. We're exhausted. We, you know, you hit the, the phone machine that was we used to all have back then. And it said, Dana, I'm sorry to say Jeff passed five hours ago. Now, Jeff was a blacksmith with the biggest hands who used to love putting his hand over my face and he could cover my whole damn face. <laughs> and in that moment, I didn't even say it to Dana. And that moment of hearing of his unexpected passing, because he had been thriving, I knew in the soul of my being that he protected us, that he came, that it was his hand. I never doubted it. 
from then on, he kept bringing us signs. Now, have you ever had that story of someone could feel the physical? Like, I know that was an emergency situation. If he hadn't done that, we would have been killed. Have you ever had someone feel that? Like, feel, uh, I can still feel it. Every time I tell the story, I feel his hand on me. Um, I'd yeah, love to hear your insights. That is a beautiful example of how you mentioned earlier that our loved ones are supporting us. And I, I too have had an experience like that where I, I had the physical feeling of it and it was on my bed. I was, I was laying in bed and I felt someone sit down next to me. And when I mm. opened my eyes, there was no one physically there, but I felt the presence of my daughter and, and it's that knowingness of the presence. Yeah. So, you, you know, some people could say, well, it could have been anything or anyone. How do you know it was that per specific person? And you had mentioned this as well, where you just have that undeniable knowingness. That's yeah, it, it was, you nailed it. It was a deep knowing yeah. beyond logic, beyond anything. And I didn't say anything until after the funeral. And I, we were walking out of the funeral and Dana says, you don't have to say a word. That was Jeff that saved us. And I said, uh, he knew. And um, he had bought Jeff a hat on that trip. And we were about to come home to start building our house. Jeff had been building his. And that hat hung on a nail, Kim, the whole time we were building the house. And Dana's a builder. And Dana would talk to him every single day. Hey, dude, getting the windows in today, you know? Um, and I'm gonna, I want to share one other small story related to that because I believe in storytelling and it helps. Mm -hmm. um, helps people see that there are signs. Men, about a year later, I had started a new massage practice and I was called intuitively, walk in that plaza, Linda, and go into each of those offices. I don't know why, I'm an introvert, I want to do that. <laughs> and give them flyers about your new practice across the street. I did it. The, the receptionist, Kim, said, um, you got to talk to the woman in the back. I did. We hit it off. And all of a sudden, she goes, I know you from somewhere. And I thought it was a spire. I said that. She goes, oh, my God, you're Jeff's friend. I said, Jeff who? And she said his name. And I said, you, you knew him? She goes, Linda, I'm going to cry. She goes, he sat in this chair where you're sitting every day for the last five years he brings me a coffee and we talk about death dying and the angels and his belief in the other side come on kim wow. that tell me like i was led there yeah. it was a, so it brings me such peace that's why i wanted you on the show the work you were doing in the world brings people peace it brings them hope it brings them this knowledge that like i like to use the term they are physically passed away but they're not gone absolutely and, and that is so important because our most of our verbiage in society is you know i lost this person or rest in peace or just a lot of the words that are used when someone does transition to the other side makes it feel like it's so final and they're gone and it's it's quite the opposite it is the opposite. And, and I've come to a place of peace in my life. Listen, I can't imagine. I've lost loved ones, never someone as close as a mother or I have already lost my dad, but a mom and a daughter in such a close, um, in a close, you know, period of time. I can't imagine that grief, but I, I, I would like to believe that now with the spiritual knowledge I have at almost 60, with the experiences I have, that when it happens, because there is no if, right, Kim? It's when we all experience deep loss. Mm -hmm. And I will, that this piece, that this conversation will come right back in my consciousness to go, that person is still with you. And that person is connected to you and they are to guide you. Yes, and if, if, that were, if there was only one thing I could share with people ever, it would be to know that your loved ones and spirit really are still with you and the other side does exist, absolutely. Yeah, and my question for someone who is really interested, right? They're like, oh my God, this is opening my eyes. Do you have any tips or strategies? Like, do they start talking to them? Do they start, like, how can they start to build a relationship with their loved one on the other side? Well, I think there, there, there's not just one way to go about doing it. I will say, you know, for some people, they 
they prefer to consult with a medium and have a reading done and that yeah. gives them the, what they're looking for. I, I also think it depends on the relationship that you had with the, the loved one. If it's, if it's someone like for me, my daughter was my entire, I felt like my entire life, you know, the most important person in my life, the person I love more than anything, it completely changed my life. So having that relationship continue with her was important to me, but for, you know, like when my grandmother died, I, I expected that I knew that was going to happen eventually. I, I didn't have such a need to have a continuing relationship. So I think it really depends on that relationship and, and what your needs are. But some people um, prefer to, to go to a medium and, and have that interaction there. Some people want to learn how to have this connection for themselves. And I will tell you, it's absolutely possible. I think anyone can do it. It does require um, that you learn how to nurture your intuit intuition and your intuitive sen senses and to, to raise your vibration, which can be extremely difficult when you're grieving because you have to express that grief in healthy ways. If someone is interested in, in learning how to connect with their loved ones on the other side themselves, um, I would encourage them to, if they want to work with a teacher that can help them with that, for me, you know, having the experience that I've had with my intuition for so long and, and developing that and being a spiritual healer, it was it was already very developed. So, you know, your intuition being a part of that, getting uh, grief support that is helpful for you so that you're able to express that grief in healthy ways because we don't want to pretend we're not grieving in order to try to raise our vibration to connect with our loved ones because our, our loved ones on the other side vibrate at a much different frequency than we do a lot higher they're not held down by a physical body so really taking care of ourselves and uh, working with someone that we know and, and trust and resonate with to help us with that transformation of grief not to heal grief necessarily or make it go away because for, for some people like me, I, I imagine I'm always going to have some part of myself grieving uh, that my daughter isn't physically here with me. But then, like I said, the nature of that grief changes. And talking, like you said, talking to them, they hear you, they're with you. When you are receiving signs, you know, I encourage people to get a journal and write those things down. And our loved ones communicate through symbols. So common symbols you might see um, really being open to it. And I never had the intention of doing mediumship readings for other people. When I set out on this journey, it was for myself. But in learning evidential mediumship, I had to practice readings with other people. And I wasn't necessarily looking forward to it at first, but as I did, and I was able to connect with people, share that evidence, share those messages, and see what a healing art this really is, that also gave me reassurance that the way that I'm receiving communication from my daughter is real because it's the way I receive communication from other loved ones in spirit that I share with their living loved ones. So it was also that acknowledgement and it helped me develop that uh, connection with my daughter by connecting for other people. Okay. So in a nutshell, I would say, determine what you, what you want, what are your needs? And you know, if you're interested in learning it, you definitely can. And if you're not interested in learning it, but you just want to uh, communicate with them, write to them, talk to them, um, be open to receiving what those signs are. That's beautiful. And I want to encourage everyone because I've done it many times in my life. Um, a, a evidential mediumship reading is gives you so much peace. And I invite you to visit kimcoots.com to learn more. And Kim, we're going to take a quick break before we come back for our last um, eight or nine minutes. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. I am with Kim Coots of kimcoots.com. Be sure to check out her sacred offerings. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. Are you feeling the call to unleash your feminine wisdom, hone your empathic gifts, and rise as the goddess you are? You're not alone, my beautiful friend. Crystal Cockerham, spiritual mentor and certified red tent facilitator, trained in both shamanic and priestess practices, works with awakened, empathic women around the world to unlock their shackles of pain, shame, and self-condemnation so they can reclaim their sovereignty and liberate themselves from the world's perceptions. As the founder of Wisdom Awakens and an international best-selling author, 
Crystal uses her own intuitive blend of spiritual midwifery and energy healing to support women on their journey of transformation. You'll find supportive guidance and community in Crystal's programs, retreats, and sacred offerings. If you're feeling the call to embrace your feminine power, learn more about Crystal's supportive services at crystalcockerham.com. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. And right before our break, we're talking about some of the common sides from the other side and how to connect with our loved ones. You know, if someone's listening now, Kim, what can they expect to experience during an evidential medium? Let's take the fear out of any connotations they have so they can feel it more at peace about reaching out. Yeah, first of all, I, I want to share that a mediumship reading involves three different parts. It's the medium, but it's also the living loved one. So that person and then their loved one. So that connection um, is, is a three-way connection there. So for the, the person coming in for a reading, knowing that they are a part of this connection and for the medium to connect in with their energy helps them connect with their living loved ones. So the more that they can come to the reading with a sense of love and intention for the reading, um, you know, it's very common for people to feel nervous about it, but the more you can connect into an intention of love and um, come into it from that perspective is helpful. And the, the medium should give them an overview of what's going to happen, but typically they'll, you know, they will connect, um, explain what's going to happen during the reading. The medium will connect with a, a loved one on the other side. The medium doesn't have control over who comes through. You know, sometimes someone might come for a reading and say, hope, hoping that they could connect, let's just say, for example, their mother and their grandmother comes through. Um, sometimes, you know, the vibration of the medium has an impact on uh, who on the other side connects well with them. And sometimes multiple people come through. So the medium does not have control over, or they can't demand that a specific loved one on the other side comes through. That's not the nature of, of how a reading works. But the medium opens up to receiving a, a loved one on the other side to come through to share evidence and messages for the highest good of, of the living loved one. And then they start sharing, you know, as an evidential medium, they would start sharing evidence of who they're connecting with to establish who the loved one on the other side is for the person receiving and then messages coming through. And, you know, it, it can be very emotional for the person receiving the reading and it's okay for, for that emotion to be there. And, you know, readings last, you know, different mediums offer readings for different periods of time and, and uh, different lengths. But overall, for the person receiving that reading to know that they are a part of this dynamic and that it is assuming that they're connecting with a medium, an evidential medium who is using this as a sacred healing art, that it is a healing practice for them and that their loved ones on the other side will come through to give them loving messages. It's not scary. There's nothing evil about it. Nothing bad can happen in it. 
Um, so kind of dispelling any fear around it. Mm, that's beautiful. And um, especially the dispelling fear, because I remember the first time I went to one, which was, God, I think I was 17. Um, I've been on this path a long time. I was like, I was kind of, I remember, I can remember what the room looks like, sitting there with my arms crossed, like, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, go ahead, talk to me. That's what you mean, right? Come in open, mm -hmm. willing to receive so that the medium can connect. It's an energy, correct? It is, yes. So come in with um, um, with an open spirit. My, um, I guess you'd call him my nephew, he's married to my niece, had a loss of his mom, maybe, I think it was last year. And we kept, he is devastated. He was a twin, very, very close. Um, and she, she passed young, she was about my age. And it was sudden. And he was really grieving and couldn't move forward. And my niece and others, they, they all know me, are like, you, you've got to go see a medium, you will find peace. He finally went, Kim, six, eight weeks ago. And he had full long sleeves on. Um, and the medium says, she says that she does see the new tattoo that you just had done in Rhode Island. It was such detail that he said all of a sudden his heart just burst open and he knew she was there. Like, and he's, he was describing this to me. I wasn't there. And he said, Linda, the healing, I know she's okay now. Because in his mind, she was suffering because that's how, what death meant to him. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that a lot too? Like in their mind, the suffering that they may have experienced here is up there. And the, in the, the one left behind believes that their loved one is just going to continue suffering. But I have found that not to be true. Um, what's your feelings? Yes, and I, I will share that from a personal perspective. You know, my, my daughter died of an accidental drug overdose, and I didn't even know that she had been using drugs or been in recovery. And I was, I had to know that she was okay and she was safe. And, and that was a fear of mine is, you know, where is she? Um, is she okay? You know, did she make it to the light? You know, all of these worries around that. And I find it common from readings I do with other people, you know, if their loved one died a traumatic death, you know, they, they fear that even if they didn't, there can be fear for that too still. And in knowing, getting this validation from their loved one in spirit that they are happy that they're healthy, that they're, they're okay, not only okay, but they are, they're living a beautiful life on the other side is, can be such a key component to healing for them that they don't have to worry if their loved one is okay. Yeah. And I saw that in his, his physical energy changed after the reading. Mm -hmm. He was defeated, depressed. And now it was like a relief. Like she's okay. She's not suffering there. Then that means he could stop the healing process. He was holding on so tight to that, to that worry and that concern. And um, what a gift, right? That's the gift that I see you giving your clients is to, um, give that sense of peace because until they come to a place of peace, I, I believe it's harder to, to move on through the griefing process. It's almost like you become stuck. Yeah. And, and it, it does bring that other layer to this too. Of, if it's one thing to know your loved one in spirit is there with you, but it's also that reassurance that they are well and, and happy and, and safe and okay. Cause having both of those concerns at the same time makes grief all you know so much harder and it, it is a lot more difficult to learn how to live after you know a traumatic loss like that if if you're weighed down by that worry you know you have the missing of them but you also have the worry about them and having that validation from your loved one on the other side is, is there, there's nothing, that I, I don't think that there is, in my personal experience, there's nothing that could have been more comforting and healing than to know that. Mm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I've seen so many people experience the healing they receive from just receiving that information from the other side. And Kim, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Um, for the work you're doing in the world, but having the courage to share your story, um, because I know it brings you back into that moment, for the work that you're doing in the world to help others navigate their loss and grief. So thank you, my friend. Thanks for joining me. 
Oh, thank you so much for allowing me to share with you today. And it's been such a pleasure. And again, if, you know, want to just leave everyone with saying your loved ones and spirit really are still with you and the other side does exist. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. I appreciate it so much. You're welcome. And I want to invite everyone before we sign off, please grab Kim's free gift at kimcoots.com and learn about her sacred offerings. And of course, um, schedule a evidential mediumship reading. Blessings, everyone. Until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.